Despite the evolution of humanity, the efforts to build societies that communicate, entities that regulate and avoid conflict, genocides are not part of the past. Six genocide will be tackled between this video and the next. It will be the story of some of the most known 21st century genocides. This century barely started. Close your doors, turn your lights off, and let's get started. Disclaimer. This video is a product of my own research and interpretation. I can be wrong. I do not pretend to know it all. My goal is to share information with you, entertain you, and hopefully teach you something. If you know more about the topic, please feel free to correct me and share it in the comments down below. Respect and understanding go both ways and are appreciated. Enjoy! First, Tamil Genocide, 1983-2009 and 2009. The Tamil people constitute 15% of the population in Sri Lanka. Also known as the Jaffna people, their roots in the Sri Lankan island stretches into antiquity. Almost 4,400 years ago, we can notice Tamil literature was already present. Behind the Sri Lankan civil war lie years of build-up rancor between the majority Sinhalese and the minority Tamils that has been raising since the independence from the British colonizer in 1948. The Sinhala only act in 1956 recognized Sinhalese as the only official language, barring Tamils from holding official positions. Leading up to that new act, Tamils non-violently protested this structural change and were met with violent pushback from the government of Sri Lanka, followed by anti-Tamil pogroms in 1958 and 1977, going as far as an act of cultural genocide by the destruction in 1981 of the Jaffna Library, a historic landmark and frequent meeting place for the Tamils, which fueled Tamil separatist sentiments. On July 11, 1983, an interview with the London Daily Telegraph recorded the then president saying, I'm not worried about the opinion of the Jaffna people now. Now we can think of them, not about their lives or their opinion about us. Nothing will happen in our favor until the terrorists are wiped out. Just that. The more you put pressure in the north, the happier the Sinhala people will be here. Really. If I starve the Tamils out, the Sinhala people will be happy. A few days later, on July 24, 1983, what is called today Black July started and is considered the spark that ignited a 26-year-long armed struggle between the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam against the government of Sri Lanka, during which a mass massacre, considered today a genocide, was ordered and executed against the Tamil, followed by years of violent persecutions and a second genocide in 2009, the Mulivaikal massacre, with no one held responsible for either. Sri Lanka's government declared victory in May 2009 in one of the world's most intractable wars after a series of battles in which it killed the leader of the Tamil Tigers. 146 dead Tamils and a further 280,000 Tamils put behind barbed wire concentration camps. Scenes which the world would not have contemplated repeating since the Second World War. Suffering from trauma, the community showed resilience, commemorating their fallen family and friends, erecting memorials to never forget them. One of these memorials, the Mulivaikal Memorial of Jaffna University, was destroyed on the 9th of January 2021 by the Sri Lankan government. This is not a war memorial. This is a way of comforting ourselves. It's a healing center. There is nothing there to suggest it's a symbol of war. Second, 
Second, Bamboo Tea Genocide, 1998 to today. Pygmy people are believed to be the first inhabitants of the equatorial forests of Central Africa. Calling themselves Bambuti, they have always experienced extreme marginalization in society. Usually living in villages far from any road, they have no access to basic services or development assistance. But even in the middle of the forest, in the name of conservation, they were pushed out alienated from their livelihood as well as their cultural and spiritual heritage. Stereotyped by other ethnic groups as beggars and thieves, they were forced to live exposed in the forest, exposed to wild animals, diseases and starvation. Even though they have never taken up arms during conflicts, they were still targeted by armed groups, easy targets, used for the knowledge and skills of the forest. Perpetrators, who often have mystic beliefs about the Bambuti, think they have special powers due to their origins as forest dwellers. The most common belief is that back pain and other ailments can be cured by sleeping with a Bambuti woman, which became a common justification for rape. Effacer le tableau, or literally erasing the board, was the operation name given for the extermination of the Bambuti pygmies by forces in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Carried out by soldiers from the Movement of the Liberation of Congo, MLC, who became known locally as Les Effaceurs or the Erasers, from the Rally for Congolese Democracy. The main objective of the operation was the territorial conquest and ethnic cleansing of the 90,000 pygmies from Congo's eastern region. They were targeted specifically, considered subhuman, abducted and forced to act as trail finders, accused of collaborating with the Maymay, who have fought on different sides in the long-running war, or simply to be eaten, believing that their flesh held magical powers and that would be transferred to the consumer. It is estimated that 60 to 70,000 were killed in the campaign. The pygmies are threatened with being eaten as a weapon of war to get them to leave the area. The horrors were perpetrated at night time, when they believed that villagers were sleeping. Some survivors recall the events. They started shooting at all those who tried to escape. They captured their young children, gathered them and held them until daylight. Then they put some of them in a mortar and pounded them to death. They destroyed the huts and set them on fire. The people were also burned. They started killing people and eating them. I saw them cutting up human flesh. Then they were putting it on fire to grill it. I got scared and ran away, not knowing what else happened behind me. The scene of the conflict is known as Africa's First World War because of the number of parties involved in the struggle for the mineral-rich country. Mass killing, cannibalism, systematic rape in the pygmy communities, such crimes that started being recorded in 1998 and continue up to the present. Third, Darfur Genocide, 2003 to today. Darfur is a region in Western Sudan, witnessing what is known today as the first genocide of the 21st century. It was carried out against the Fur, Masalit and Zarawa tribes, resulting in more than one million children killed, raped, wounded, displaced, traumatized, or that endure loss of parents and families. The horrible situation is believed to be the result of many events that Sudan has experienced since its independence from Britain in 1956. Soon after it, Sudan was drowned in two civil wars for the remainder of the 20th century. Rooted in the differences between the Christians 
the animist black southerners and the Arab-dominated government. And powered by the discovery of oil in the non-Muslim Darfur region. The two million deaths, poverty and famine resulting from the two consecutive wars added to the negligence of a report of raising violence in Darfur in the 90s and the marginalization that they faced at the federal level, Darfur remained underdeveloped, lacking infrastructure and assistance. Neglect combined with rumors that the government was arming Arab tribesmen, Janjaweed, or devil men on horseback, justified for a rebel attack on Sudanese Air Force base at Al Fashr in North Darfur in 2003. This attack resulted in the retaliation of the government on the residents of Darfur, contributing to the large-scale massacre humanity is witnessing today. Many talks between the Sudanese government and the three main rebel groups the Justice and Equality Movement, Abdel Wahid Muhammad al Noor's faction of the Sudan Liberation Movement, and the Mini Minawi's factions of the SLM took place. But their failed conclusions allowed the massacre to resume. In 2007, the effort to stop the genocide was through the UN based creation of the United Nations African Union mission that sent soldiers and armed men in order to protect civilians, even if they had to use force. But again, it failed and they were asked to leave mid-2020. In March 2009 and July 2010, the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for the Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir for crimes against humanity and genocide. The response of the Sudanese government was translated by the expulsion of aid agencies from the country in the refusal to hand over the president. A bloc that lasted 10 years, with more attacks and deaths even going beyond borders, the Janjaweed being accused of invading their neighbor Chad, resulting in the flight of nearly 100,000 Chadians. In July 2011, South Sudan gained independence from Sudan and became its own nation, resulting in a signed Doha document for peace in Darfur between the liberation and justice movement and the Sudanese government, a first step towards peace. A document, as it turns out, that proved to be only that, a bunch of signed papers proved by the campaigns against Darfur villages between 2014 and 2015, led by the government forces backed by the Janjaweed. Villages were burned, villagers were beaten, raped and executed. One particular attack in October 2014 in North Darfur was organized and executed, a mass rape of over 200 women and girls that lasted 36 hours. According to a defected Janjaweed member, they had been explicitly ordered to rape women. Rape as a tool of genocide, which didn't spare any female. Single, married, pregnant, elderly as old as 70, children younger than 10 years old, all victims of sexual mutilations or beaten to death. In the ongoing conflict, the rape have reportedly mostly occurred in non-Arab villages. They were often carried out in front of others, including husbands, fathers, mothers and children of the victims, forced to watch. In April 2019, after 30 years of power, the President Omar al-Bashir was finally ousted. In response to months of unarmed protest, to which the government responded with armed retaliations. In February 2020, the Sudanese government officially agreed to hand al Bashir over to the ICC to face war crime and genocide charges sent 10 years earlier. But the situation in Darfur is still an ongoing living hell. Religion, land, 
reveries, and so many other reasons that created genocides. Many other ones need to be remembered and known. In the second half of the 20th century, at the doorstep of the 21st, we can enumerate the Bosnian genocide in Bosnia and Herzegovina between 1992 and 1995, 8,000 victims. The Guatemalan genocide in Guatemala between 1962 and 1996, 32,632 victims. And Fal genocide in Iraq between 1986 and 1989, 50,000 victims. Isaac genocide in Somalia between 1988 and 1991, 50,000 victims. Ikiza genocide in Burundi in 1972, 80,000 victims. East Timor genocide in Indonesia between 1975 and 1999, 80,320 victims. The genocide of Akoli and Lango people in Uganda between 1972 and 1978, 100,000 victims. The massacres of Hutus during the First Congo War between 1996 and 1997, 200,000 victims. And finally, the Cambodian genocide in the democratic Kampuchea between 1975 and 1979, 1,386,734 victims. Let us take a moment of silence for all the victims of genocide from the past and from the present, the ones known and the ones not offered any media coverage that we might never hear about.